Hi, I'm Jacob Heaps, Product Manager for our Bituminous Products here at Johns Manville. Today we're going to walk you through an installation using our new solvent-free one-part cold adhesive Dynaset 1K. We're going to be using our Dynalastic 180S base sheet and the new adhesive Dynaset 1K for this install. I'm going to kick it over to Todd now, our Director of Technical Services, to talk about some of the equipment we'll be using. Thanks, Jacob. Today we're going to uh, install this product. We're going to assimilate putting it down on a concrete deck. We'll talk a little bit about that more. For the application, we're gonna use a gravity spreader. That's gonna to be to apply the base sheet. Obviously, then we'll use a roller to roll that out and get it um, adhered nice and well. When we're done, we're gonna put a cap sheet down and we're gonna use a quarter inch knot squeegee for that. And then to seal the laps in the base sheet, we're gonna use our Leister welder with a modified bitumen tip on it. As mentioned, we'll be using our Dynalastic 180S base sheet for the installation today. It's crucial to use a polyester reinforced base sheet with this ribbon application that we're gonna demonstrate. This allow, the polyester reinforcement allows the sheet to absorb any sort of movement that might happen with the partially adhered application. Dynalastic 180S carries a very low perm rating along with our other SPS membranes and can be used as a vapor retarder in both bituminous and single ply applications. As you can see today, as we're doing the application, we've already rolled out the base sheets. Being a polyester reinforced, it's important to roll them out, let them relax a little bit before we install them. Our surfacing here is to assimilate a concrete deck. Uh, the reason for that is the bead application is specifically for the deck application, and we'll show more reasons for that later. All right, now we're just gonna roll the base sheets back up loosely so we can get ready to set the adhesive. A couple different ways after they relax, we can just loosely roll them up, get them ready to roll back out. Or in some cases on very large projects, you may actually roll the material out and then fold them back onto themselves and put the adhesive down that way. Today we're gonna to roll them up. One of the things you want to do is once you open your pails, we just want to mix the material up, make sure we got good mixture in there. It is a one part adhesive, so we're not mixing two parts together, but we want to make sure there's no settling. So you want to just use a good paddle with a good heavy duty drill. And the key is just to get mixing from top to bottom and get that good vortex going so you can see the material mixing. And as you can see on this bucket, it's pretty well mixed, so all we're going to do is just make sure the whole product is mixed. One of the key performance features of the Dynaset 1K is the lack of solvent in the formulation. Being a solvent-free adhesive, you'll notice there is no odor as you pour this into the applicator cart. In a typical ribbon application with 12 inches on center, application rates for Dynaset 1K will be one gallon per square. You can load up to four pails of Dynaset 1K into a cart at any given time, meaning you can install anywhere between 15 and 20 squares with one cart run. So we preset these rolls so we can show a fuller application. One of the things we did, got these rolls down. Um, we put the application into 12 inches on center bead spacing. And now what we'll do is we'll go out here and we'll actually install a roll so you can see how the beads look when they go down. Okay, as you can see, we have our holes 12 inches on center. You can see I'm only putting down three beads because as I put the adjoining rolls down, that picks up the 12 inches on center. So you're gonna see these three beads go down and then we'll, we'll uh, adjoin the rolls. And as you can see, our beads go down. You wanna kinda of control the size by the speed you're walking. And you can see we got a good half inch to three quarter inch bead going down. And you can see where those beads are. We got one close to the seam to keep our seam held tight. And then we got the 12 inches on center. Every square of material, you want a six inch pre predetermined break where the adhesive won't be. So we pre-cut some membrane there and laid it down as you can see. And we're just gonna take it away now. 
which creates a cross channel for moisture that might be trapped underneath the membrane to move both perpendicularly and laterally along the membrane. Because Dynaset 1K is a moisture cure adhesive, it will start to cure quickly in hot, uh, humid temperatures in the summertime. Typical working time is about 45 minutes. You'll notice as the membrane cures, it develops a light skin over the top of it. And that'll be a nice easy way for you to see that you might have an issue with adhesion. If you do see that skin on top of the adhesive, you will have to reapply adhesive to get nice adhesion. Now, as you can see, once we roll this out, somebody will come behind and roll it with a weighted roller. And that's to spread those beads out and give us full application of that bead. And we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Now, as you can see, once we roll the membrane, those beads went down half inch to three quarter. Once we roll them, the adhesion spreads out. Now it's close two to three inches wide. That gives us the adhesion we need for the approvals. But you still have your channels for, for moisture to move through. Okay, now that we have our base sheet laid down, the adhesive's got a set up to it so it can't move around. We're not gonna seal our laps. And for this, we're gonna use the Leister Automatic Welder. If you look at the welder, you can tell we put a new tip on it, typically used for single ply. They do make a wide attachment tip and a roller for mod bit. That's what we're gonna use on this. We have our temperature setting at 932 degrees and our speed at 5.5. And we'll weld this. It's a little slower, obviously, than single ply, but this gets you a nice consistent weld down these laps. And you can see it works pretty much just like single ply. You put the, the tip underneath and the, the welder automatically starts. And you can see using this temperature and this speed, it actually will create a bleed out right on the edge of that lap. So just like single ply, we're just gonna run it along the edge and you can see the nice little bleed out it creates. It's a little slower than single ply, but um, for a mod bit product, it is more consistent than trying to do any of the other type of welds. As you can see, I'm just running the wheel just inside the edge of the seam, and you can see the nice bleed out rolling out the side of the lap. And that gives you a nice seal on the edge of these laps. Essentially, once you do this and you do your in laps, you have a watertight base sheet down um, so you can prepare to put your cap sheet down. Now, based on temperature, you might speed this up a little bit. If you're outside and this is a little warmer, obviously you could speed it up a little bit because you got that ambient temperature on your membrane. Um, but that's something you should test each day before you start your welding, um, just to make sure you get your temperature set correctly. That's a nice consistent bleed out right there. That's exactly what we'd want to keep if we were, uh, if we were welding this um, right now. That, that kind of bleed out right there is what you want. Nice and consistent. Um, and it, it's just a nice quarter inch bleed out. You can tell because it's not bubbling that you're not overheating the, the membrane as well. Um, so that's another thing to watch out for as you're welding to make sure you don't do that.
All right, now that we've seen the ribbon application of the base sheet, as well as the welding of the side laps, Todd's gonna go ahead and install a cap sheet using Dynaset in a full coverage application. So Dynaset can be used both in the ribbon application, as we showed for the base sheet, but it can also be used as an interapply adhesive as well with SPS membranes. Coverage rate is 1.5 gallons per square to two gallons per square, depending on the substrate. In this instance, we're gonna go ahead and use two gallons per square to put the cap sheet down. Yeah, and what we're gonna do and how we control that is by using a knot squeegee. And as you can see um, in from earlier, it's a quarter inch knot squeegee and that helps control the amount. We're gonna have Oscar pour it out in front of me and I'll squeegee behind. And as you see, as we get it down, we'll just roll the membrane into it wet. A little heavier, a little heavier down here, Oscar. And as you can see, to get it started, you just kind of got to get it moved around and get it covering. And once you do that, what Oscar has put down, now we'll fill in and we'll be able to start just pulling nice straight lines along the edges and get a good coverage. You just want to move the adhesive down so you're not rolling your membrane into large heavy puddles. And by using the quarter inch notch, you can see how the membrane kind of, or the adhesive flows out to the proper thickness. And Oscar will now kind of work down and start rolling the membrane in as we go. Once again, you just want to keep kind of an eye on it. Make sure any areas where you got heavy application, you just push it through the squeegee to get the proper application rates. Now, one of the things you want to watch out for is if you're doing a lot of area, Keep an eye on the squeegee because we are rolling over or pushing it over a sanded base sheet. So over time it can start knocking your edges down and reduce it from being a quarter inch notch to less. Um, so you want to keep an eye on that and change out your blades every so often. You want to pour me out some, Jacob? And as we mentioned on the ribbon application, this will start to skim over, especially in higher humidity times. So that's something to be aware of is that you don't get too far ahead of the membrane and allow that adhesive that you've already spread to skin over during application. Yeah, so basically this has got enough body and it's viscous enough to, as soon as we get out in front of it, we can start rolling into it. A little more over there, Jacob, and we'll roll out to the end here. Typically, you'll end up with a couple guys on squeegees, each working each side, so they can, from a speed perspective, roll it out. Oops. A little more, Jacob. Perfect. And there you go. As you can see, if we were rolling this out on the roof, now we'd start the next application. 
and we'd actually put the adhesive right through our lap and everything, and it'd be a full adhesive application um, on the field of the roof. All right, now that we have the roll out and set, Oscar's gonna come behind just like the others and roll it in so we get a good set. And you can see as he's rolling, how we're getting a good set into the adhesive along the edge of the membrane. So it's important to make sure you roll this when you're done setting the roll. This will eliminate any voids that could lead to blisters later on. And like I said, it gets you full adhesion of that cap sheet into the material.